of one of my favorite cafes, the Van Dyke Cafe, on the corner of Jefferson and Lincoln Road. It's really one of the best places to come for Sunday brunch or any time for that matter. It really is, and it's right in the middle of Lincoln Road Mall. In fact, let me show you on the map where we're at. We've come up Collins and stopped in along Española Way, and now we're just three blocks north of there, right here on Lincoln Road and Jefferson Street. In just a moment, we'll walk over to the Lincoln Theater on the corner of Lincoln and Pennsylvania. Now, Paul, this building behind us, mm -hmm. the pedestrian mall in the Lincoln Road area, really have a tremendous amount of history. Uh, they really do, and the key here is Carl Fisher. In fact, Carl Fisher carved this beautiful mall out of a swamp. I want to show you a picture of this. Look at this. This is the future Lincoln Road Mall in the mid-1910s. That's amazing. Look at this jungle he had to clear out. You know, Fisher loved Abraham Lincoln. He promoted a transcontinental highway and called it the Lincoln Highway in his pre-Miami days. Then when he moved to Miami, he began clearing land around here in the early 1910s when this picture was taken. This was land to be cleared for his vision of Lincoln Road. He built his oceanfront home at the far eastern end of Lincoln Road, and by 1916, he had built his first hotel on this street. Let me guess, the Lincoln Hotel. <laughs> That's right. He built the Lincoln Hotel at Lincoln and Washington. It was a combination hotel and apartment building. Now, what else was Fisher up to? He was up to a lot of things. Remember now, during this time, there was tremendous growth on Miami Beach. Uh, in 1926, he had completed Lincoln Road and turned it into a shopping district for upscale shoppers. He even built, at this time, a golf course just to the north of Lincoln Road and a polo field to the south. By 1931, there was a Bombwood Teller and a Saks Fifth Avenue on Lincoln Road. These were the kind of stores that tourists from up north were used to. Now, Paul, is it true that this building was actually used as Carl Fisher's base when he was selling his real estate? It was. In fact, he built this seven-story building in 1924 at a cost of $127,000, a large sum for that time. And he was such a character, so flamboyant, that uh, on occasion he would take prospective buyers of his real estate up to his penthouse over there on the seventh floor, look out at a spot property he owned, and say, that is your lot. <laughs> Well, speaking of our lot, we've got the next spot we've got to go to, the Lincoln Theater, just down that way. The Lincoln Road Mall on the corner of Pennsylvania at the site of the Lincoln Theater. This theater was designed by uh, Robert Collins and Thomas Lamb for Mitchell Wolfson's Wameco Theater Company, and it's a beautiful example of a streamlined, modern, or art, art deco style building. Look at the eyebrows that come around there. You can see the elaborate stylized floral bar relief panels, the rounded contours, the cantilevered marquee. The theater opened in 1936 with a showing of King of Burlesque, starring Warner Baxter and Alice Faye, and it remained a movie theater until the 1980s. Then it was purchased by the New World Symphony, who even today calls it home. In fact, we hope they get in there today to tape, but they're rehearsing under the baton of Michael Tilson Thomas right now as we speak. Now, what was, the, what was it like in the 30s here, Miami Beach, when this theater was built? Well, despite the Great Depression, this area was booming. In 1936, the year this was built, there were hundreds of hotels and apartments under construction. Now, here's a picture of a trolley car on Lincoln Road. What happened was Fisher and Florida Power and Light joined forces, created a trolley line that ran all the way up to the year 1939 when the trolley was halted and buses replaced the trolley as a mobile system. This is one of my favorite old buildings on Lincoln Road, just across from the Lincoln Theater. Now, Carl Fisher had something to do with this as well, didn't he? He certainly did. In 1920, the city of Miami Beach wanted a community church, but they didn't have the land to build it on. So Fisher's wife, Jane, more or less shamed him into donating the land. The church is a classic example of the mission style of architecture. Later on, Lincoln Road evolved into Lincoln Road Mall. Yes, by the late 1950s, the decline had set in here, and so the merchants hired Morris Lapidus, who had designed the Fountain Blue, mm -hmm. to create a mall with the hopes of luring back shoppers. And by the early 1960s, uh, this place had really picked up, but then another decline set in soon after. Now, that's a theme that's been developing on Miami Beach. We've got a boom, and we've got a bust, and now... Well, I'll tell you what, for the last 20 years, there's been a tremendous renaissance on South Beach, and I think if Carl Fisher came back here today, he'd be proud of this mall. I think he'd be very proud. Let's go see some more. Sounds good.
Paul, there's another early Art Deco building that we can't forget up on 21st and Collins, just right in the Collins Park area, and that's the Bass Museum. Yes, this one was originally designed by Russell Pancoast in 1930. He was another early Miami Beach pioneer. It was called initially the John Collins Memorial Library. Today, it's the Bass Museum. But I think the most compelling place in this part of the neighborhood on Miami Beach has to be the Holocaust Memorial just north of us. It's just a few blocks away on Meridian Avenue. The idea began in 1984 when Dr. Helen Fagan asked a group of Holocaust survivors to join her in developing a permanent memorial to honor the six million Jews who perished during that time. I understand Miami Beach had one of the largest Holocaust survivor populations in the world. So it was very fitting that it be built here. It took Kenneth Treister, an architect and sculptor, over four years to complete, and Ilya Wiesel helped to dedicate it in 1990. There is an eternal light and a memorial wall that for many is their only link to their families. I think the most moving symbol is the bronze sculpture over the reflecting pool. It's over 40 feet high and depicts figures crying out in anguish. It's a very emotional image. Yes, but people who come here are struck by the beauty and the solace they find at the Holocaust Memorial. Next time on New Florida, we'll walk over to the Raleigh Hotel and the Jackie Gleason Theater of the Performing Arts to visit the neighborhoods near 17th Street and the Miami Beach Civic Complex.